This is a Columbia 75 video featuring Dr. J. Radhakrishnan speaking on his approach to acute kidney injury. Hello everybody. Uh, this is my approach to working up a patient who has acute kidney failure. Uh, the first order of business, if possible, is to determine whether this is acute or chronic. The only sure way to tell if it's acute or chronic is to look at pre previous serum creatinines, but the, there are other things you can do. If the patient has had a long history of uh, nocturia waking up at night, it might indicate chronicity. Um, if a patient has an ultrasound at the time of admission and it shows small kidneys, it is highly indicative of chronic, chronic kidney failure. But assuming it's acute kidney failure, uh, one needs to rule out post-renal causes, and this can be done very quickly using a bladder scan. And if a patient has a Foley catheter already in place, it's highly unlikely that the patient has obstructive uropathy. The only exception are those patients who have um, a retroperitoneal process, for example, a lymphoma or a metastatic cancer. In such patients, you may have a negative bladder uh, study, but uh, since all the obstruction is upper tract, and we need to do an abdominal CT to look at the retroperitoneal area in such patients. And concomitantly, we will be looking for clues for pre-renal azotemia. And classically, you'll see a change in blood pressure from baseline or if there's orthostasis. The urine fractional excretion of sodium might help, but in my experience, it's not very helpful. And once we have ruled out pre- and post-renal etiologies, then we now need to focus on the kidney itself. The kidney is composed of four compartments, the glomerulus, the vessels, the interstitium, and the tubular compartment. So going in order, we first look at the glomerular compartment, and the urinalysis tells us if there is indeed a glomerular nephritis that's causing acute kidney failure. The presence of protein, red cells, and or red cell casts are highly indicative of a glomerular etiology. So we then need to do serologies, um, and then most patients will need a kidney biopsy. There are two etiologies that involve the vascular compartment, and the first is atheroemboli, which typically happens after a uh, left heart catheterization or other vascular procedures involving the large arteries. And you may see evidence of emboli elsewhere, or the patient may manifest a systemic vasculitic type syndrome. But it's uh, without uh, evidence of emboli elsewhere, it's almost impossible to make this diagnosis, and rarely we need a kidney biopsy. And the second area that's uh, etiology of vascular problems is thrombotic microangiopathy. And this is suspected when the patient has a falling hemoglobin, a falling platelet count, and evidence of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia in the presence of schistocytes. Then a patient may have acute interstitial disease uh, as a consequence of allergy to drugs. So if you have an offending drug, which is typically antibiotics, um, after 7 to 10 days, the patient is noted to have a rising creatinine with or without fever, with or without a skin rash, with or without eosinophil in the blood or the urine. And the best way to make a diagnosis is to withdraw the agent and then see if it uh, affects kidney function. And as the last category is the tubular compartment. And all patients who have prolonged ischemia, uh, for example, cardiogenic shock or septic shock, can cause uh, the presence of acute tubular necrosis. But in the absence of a obvious pre-renal uh, insult, that one looks, needs to look at toxins, and both endogenous toxins like uh, myeloma, paraproteins, or heme pigment can cause ATN. Uh, in the urine, there's a clue that if you get a lot of heme positivity without red cells, it indicates heme pigment induced ATN. And if you get a strongly positive protein to creatinine ratio with a negative dipstick, it's indicative of myeloma nephropathy. Um, and then the, the last etiology is uh, crystal-induced ATN, which can happen with insoluble crystals like acyclovir, for example. So again, one needs to take a drug history. So this is my approach to kidney failure, and this algorithm uh, demonstrates how this can be done very effectively in over 95% of patients.